When you woke up this morning, you were probably under a blanket, I would guess, but have you ever tried sleeping without the covers? Turns out it is not as easy as it sounds. Here to tell us why is sleep consultant Alana McGinn. She has spent more than a decade helping children and parents sleep better. Welcome back. Thanks for having me. Let's talk about blankets. I mean, I'm Love one of those that. people that needs to have one yeah. with me. How do blankets help us fall and stay asleep? So our circadian rhythm, that's our natural sleep rhythm. It's a huge driver for our sleep. And what it does is it starts to lower our core body temperature around 2 p.m. That's why at 2 p.m. we're kind of reaching, you feel that slump, right? So we're reaching for our second, third, fourth cup of coffee. Mm -hmm. um, so this process is called thermoregulation. And the reason why our temperature does drop is because we sleep better cooler. So it's helping to prepare our body to sleep. But what can happen is throughout the night as your core temperature is dropping and dropping and dropping, you can get too cold. So we're not able to regulate our temperature. Uh, so we need to use that blanket to keep us a little bit warmer so that we're not being forced to wait because we're too cold. Um, also, the pressure of a blanket can um, activate our nervous system. Yeah, okay, I have to ask you about this because yes. in my social media feed right now, I've got all of these ads popping up for these weighted blankets. Yeah. There's yeah. truth to this. There is truth to this. So the firm pressure of the blankets activates the nervous system, releases serotonin. This is a chemical in our body that helps makes, makes us feel calm. Um, and it also helps release melatonin, which is a natural sleep hormone that helps prepare us to sleep. Should we grab our blankets? I would love to. I mean, I feel like it's time. I love this. Um, okay, so as we're doing this, I wanna throw it by you. Um, so most people prefer to sleep with a blanket, is that fair? Well, we're human, right? So we're, we're creatures of habit and likely we've been using blankets since we were kids. So mm -hmm. there's a huge association factor too um, that you know we associate sleeping with the blanket. So we're getting into bed, we're getting all comfy and cozy, we're cueing to our body, we're cueing to our brain that it's time to go to sleep because we've got the blanket on it. So there's a physiological component to it as well. What is the ideal room temperature, would you say, for sleeping? I would say it's anywhere between 69 and 72 degrees Fahrenheit. Okay. So that is 19 to 23 degrees Celsius. It seems cool, no? We sleep better cooler. So, I definitely do. Yeah, and as our temperature drops, it's the coolest point at 5 a.m., which is about 96.4 degrees, which is two degrees lower than it was in the early evening. Okay, so 5 a.m., And but that's that's thinking that you probably went to bed at what time? Uh, no, average, time, aver I would say time. about 10. It, what's yeah. cool is the thermoregulation, um, it actually dictates whether you're a lark or a night owl. So if you're a night owl, mm -hmm. your temperature starts dropping later and starts rising later. If you're an early morning waker, it starts dropping earlier and then rises earlier as well. I'm one of those people that I always have to sleep with some sort of comforter or something on, and if I get hot, I whip out one foot, yes, and then I whip out the other. And my daughter, she's a hot sleeper. She runs really a night hot. Sweat. Yeah, yeah. So I end up put taking like cold claws and wrapping them around her feet. Right. Uh, what are some do's and don'ts of uh, sleeping? So if you are a hot sleeper, I would say customize your bed to what suits suits you best, um, or customize your side of the bed if you're sharing a bed with someone. And if you are a hot sleeper, if you are a night sweater, it's a common issue. Focus on lighter fabrics, even lighter color, because darker fabric fabrics absorb the sun, um, it traps in that heat, so the lighter fabrics is what you want, and then choose more breathable fabrics. So things like flax, bamboo is very popular in bedding right now, mm. cotton, wick, fabric that's gonna kind of wick away that moisture. Um, and then either a heating pad or a cooling pad if you need it, depending on what Sounds kind of Sounds like sleeper. a lot of work. It's a lot of work, <laughs> but it's, it's, you know what, you've gotta set up that environment, you've gotta yeah. set up that environment within yourself, so get that serotonin flowing, um, but then set up your environment to sleep well as well. I just love the idea of you basically like, like making two beds, like if you share with your, yeah. your spouse, you could have two separate setups. That's right. Because really, I mean, no two are alike. And it's that's, very rare that, any, that rare. your sleep needs are the same. Yeah. Any absolute do not do's? Well, many of us think, especially if we are hot sleepers, if we are night sweaters, the best is to sleep naked or to sleep in your underwear. But if you're a night sweater, you're still gonna sweat no matter what. And now you're kind of lying in that pool of sweat, which isn't very Sounds great, disgusting. right? Yeah, it's not very comfortable. And you're <laughs> likely to wake up because of it, right? So again, focus on that moisture wicking fabric, whether it be your pajamas or your bedding. Mm -hmm. A lot of pajamas now are performance, uh, performance material, like what you work out in. So it helps oh. to kind of absorb that moisture and wick it away. There's so many different options and we There's appreciate so you being many, here. Thank you. And the snuggle in, okay? We've got our blanket <laughs> now. Alana, blanket. thanks so much. Thanks for watching. If you like this, be sure to subscribe here. And you can check out more Your Morning videos right here.